Are you looking to buy a Polestar 2? Well, if you are, you may want to watch this video till the very end because in this video, I'm gonna go through the things I find important to know before purchasing a Polestar 2. I'm gonna go through as many things in detail which I find important to know before purchasing a car like this. And I'm also gonna do some comparisons to the Tesla Model 3 Long Range, the brand new 2021 model, which I had two weeks prior to this car. So everything is very fresh in my mind. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you guys which one of those two cars I would buy. There are a few things in this interior that is lifted right out of the Volvo XC40, which this car shares a platform with. First off, we have this steering wheel here, which is basically identical to what you find in an XC40, except you have the poster logo. These buttons are glossy black plastic instead of matte black plastic. And then you have the stock switch gear behind the steering wheel, which are lifted out of the XC40. And then you have the buttons down here. And then lastly, you have the grab handle but everything else here is bespoke. So you have this unique touchscreen infotainment system here, which you don't find in any Volvo. And then you have the overall design, which feels very familiar, but still is unique to this vehicle. And it does feel different from a Volvo. I really do like the design language here. And what they have, you know, taken from Volvo, like the steering wheel, is of high quality. So you have metal finishing here, which feels very nice in the hands. You also have the buttons, which do feel high quality. And then you have the stocks behind the steering wheel, which are the best functionality of any stocks of any car in the business. I love Volvo stocks. And, you know, the quality of the interior, the materials are, you know, not the top level of what you would find in something like a Volvo XC90. They are good enough. I mean, I have nothing to fault about the materials. I wish maybe some of the materials would have been a bit nicer, but it's the way they have blended the different types of materials and fabrics and layers in this interior that makes it interesting and unique. So it's not only one type of material where they have used the same type of material everywhere. So up here you have this soft touch plastic. Here you have this fabric type of finish. And then you have this wood inlay here. And then you have like a fabric pattern finish here. And then also on the top of the doors, this feels like a fabric finish. So it's the layers of the materials, which are very nice. I'm gonna to touch upon more about the infotainment system later in this video, because that is a whole segment, but everything else here is unique. You know, it has center console here, you won't find in any other Volvo. And also this gear selector here is very cool with the poster logo here. And well, it's open, you can put your fingers through it if you want to do that, but yeah. I really do like this interior, guys, actually. Yes, the exterior does look very Volvo-esque. I do agree with that. But that is no wonder because this car was designed by the same guy who has designed every other modern Volvo. By Thomas Ingenlott, the CEO of this company was the chief designer at Volvo from 2012 till 2017. So he is basically responsible for every modern Volvo. And this was actually shown as a Volvo concept just a few years ago alongside the XC40. So this was probably meant to be something like a Volvo S40 at one point in time. But when Thomas went to Polestar and became the CEO there, he brought this design over. And I must say, this is one of the most handsome and best looking cars in modern history, in my opinion. I am a huge fan of the clean lines, the three box shape, and just the classic proportions of this car. It does have things that make it unique to something like a Volvo, like, you know, the grill here, which is the Polestar grill. It has just enough personality to make it a little different than every other Volvo. Yes, you still have the Thorshammer LED lights, maybe the best headlight design on the market. And then you have these cool frameless mirrors that are actually patented by Polestar. So instead of the glass moving within the housing, the whole housing moves, which is very, very cool. And then you have the unique tail lights, which you have this wraparound bar on the backside of the car. So overall, I am a huge fan of the design of this car. I think it is stunning. And to me, it doesn't matter that it looks a lot like a modern Volvo. It still has, you know, its edge, its own personality. 
but I have owned two Volvo XC90s designed by Thomas England in the past five years. So I love the way this looks. This car's absolutely biggest strength is the way it drives. So it feels sporty, it feels light, it feels small and nimble, very positive. It's quick, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.7 seconds. All those good stuff is very similar to drive to a Tesla Model 3 when it comes to the sportiness. But when it comes to comfort, this is on a completely different level to a Model 3. I mean, I don't know how they have done it. I don't know how they have been able to make a car that feels sporty, engaging and direct, but at the same time, it has comfort levels close to something like my Audi e-tron. In that regard, it feels very similar. It feels solid as a tank. It has a, you know, a sense of solidity that you seldom find in anything else than a German car. That is super impressive. And it irons out about nine tenths of the bumps you would feel in the Model 3, where the Model 3 would be bouncy, short suspension travel. It would just become uncomfortable and very tiresome. This has none of that. And then you have the noise levels, or rather the lack of noise levels, the quietness of this cabin, you know, the lack of road noise and wind noise compared to the Model 3 is amazing. I mean, this is so serene and comfortable to drive compared to that car. I mean, there really is a huge difference. And if you don't believe me, guys, go out and test drive this car compared to a Model 3 because it really is much more quiet and much more comfortable than a Model 3. Tech in the Polestar 2 is extremely good. So first off, you have self-driving assistance systems like Pilot Assist, which is a very competent system, a system I am very familiar with, a system I trust a lot. I have used it in all the Volvos I have owned, and in this car, it functions very similar. It may not be as fully fledged or fully functional like full self-driving from Tesla. And we don't even get all the functions you get over in the US. And within, you know, our regulations, I think this actually works better and is a little less annoying, beeps less, and it's just more comfortable to use. But the real trick up the sleeve of this car is the infotainment system. So let's turn around the camera here and show you guys the digital gauge cluster. So this car alongside the XC40 is one of two cars in the whole world that has the Android Automotive infotainment system giving you Google Maps in the central display. You do have different views here, different functionality, you know, different information, but getting Google Maps in the digital gauge cluster in full screen like this is amazing. This digital gauge cluster is 12.3 inches, high contrast, high quality, a very nice screen. But the best screen is the central display here at 11 inches vertically. This is a very nice screen to use and it might be smaller at 11 inches than something like in a Tesla Model 3, which may for a lot of people be very overwhelming. It sits a lit, little more back into the dashboard than something like on the Model 3 and is smaller. But what I like about this is that you can have some information up here in front of the driver, speed, maps, you know, state of charge, all that good information, your indicators, and then you can have the maps here or you can have your stereo, whatever you want. You can split it in between those two screens. So in my opinion, I do prefer this to something like the solo and only screen in the Tesla Model 3. And then you have the real party trick, which is Google Assistant. So I'm going to demonstrate this guy. So if you want to mute your, you know, uh, devices at home that uses this, I'm going to, you know, say the prompt. So three, two, one, mute your systems. Hey Google, naviger til Oslo. Naviger til Oslo. Hey Google. How many people live in Norway? Befolkningen i Norge var 5.384.576 i 2020. Hey Google. Sett på rattvarme. Okay, jeg slår på rattvarmen. So, 
this is so awesome. I like this a lot. It's so easy to use. And when I'm in a rush, jumping to the, to the car, I want to go somewhere, instead of, you know, fiddling about, you know, uh, putting the destination into the navigation system manually, I can just go, hey, Google, Navigere til Bergen. Navigere til Bergen. And it will just do it so effortlessly, so easily. And you can see here also this infotainment system, like a Tesla, will show you that you will arrive there with no state to charge left. And then you can, you know, add um, a waypoint somewhere to charge. So if I want to choose this and this, so it says two because, well, we don't have enough juice to go there in one go because we are at 56% state to charge. It will put the charging stations into the navigation system, show you how much juice you will arrive with at your destination, just like in a Tesla. So in many uh, regards, this is very similar to the infotainment system in a Tesla, done a bit different. And you know, that is one of the best infotainment systems out there. And this being so similar and even having more custom, uh, you know, adjustability, and you can customize it more, you can choose between which screens you want to use. I find this system better. And guys, I do have a whole tour of this infotainment system where I go in detail, link in the description box down below. The Polestar 2 comes with basically almost everything as standard. It is extremely well equipped. You get the glass sunroof, you get the power seats, Harman Kardon sound system, 360 camera, all the driving aids, and all the tech as standard. But what I would option to is this white paint color. I would also option the 20 inch diamond cut wheels. And I would go for the light colored leather interior with the light colored wood and the ventilated seats. That would make my Polestar 2 complete. And that is basically fully spec. I would spec also the 20 inch winter wheels because I live in Norway, but then you have basically a fully and perfect spec Polestar 2 for 551,000 kroners. The short answer is yes and yes, but let me go more into detail and break it down for you guys because I've done extensive testing on the 2021 Model 3 long range with heat pump and on this car. Link to all the videos in the description box down below if you want to see those videos more in detail. But what I have found out is that this car is about 20 to 40% more thirsty depending on speed and conditions to the Model 3 under similar conditions and on the same route. I've also found out that this car can go 20% less distance than the Model 3 long range. So the Model 3 long range can go 20% longer. But this car doesn't have the latest software update yet, which improves efficiency and range. We don't know by how much because Polestar haven't said it. And Polestar even said that this car had the update, but it doesn't have the update. I have confirmed that it doesn't have the update. So that is a bit annoying. And this car also doesn't have a heat pump. We know that the XC40 can be optioned with a heat pump. And Polestar have told me that a heat pump will be available at a later time in this car. And from the test I have seen with the Model 3 heat pump versus non heat pump, in the cold, cars with heat pump are about 10% more efficient. So if this car has the same efficiency bump as the Model 3 when equipped with a heat pump, the real difference in you know efficiency, well, is still gonna be like 10 to 30%, still not you know there at the Model 3, which is basically the most efficient EV out there. So getting that close is quite impressive. But considering that a Model 3 can go 20% longer, if this gets that 10% increase in you know um, efficiency, the gap may only be as small as 10%, well, if the efficiency gains are as big. So that is very interesting, but we will have to see later in the year you know, how big the efficiency bump really is. Something I was very critical about last year when I tested this Polestar 2 was the charging speed or rather the lack of charging speed and it not being able to come close to the claim charging speed of 150 kilowatts. Those things are still true. And I basically told you guys to go out and buy a Tesla Model 3 because it charges much quicker. 
But when it comes to the 21 model Model 3 long range with the LG battery pack, that isn't true anymore. And that car only charges about 15% quicker on average from 10 to 80% state of charge than this car. So the difference isn't as huge as it once was. And considering this car compared to other cars in its class and at the price range, the charging speed of this isn't too bad. It's actually quite good considering other cars to choose from. So that is very interesting. And what is interesting is that the chief of technology at Volvo has said in a podcast back in December is that the XC40 P8 recharge will come with preheating. They are working on it and it will be similar to something you will find in a Tesla where you put a charger into the destination and it will preheat the battery automatically. So when that comes, it will be very interesting to see the difference in charging speed. But we all know that Tesla usually bump up their charging speed after a while, after you know the cars have been on the market for a while and they find it safe. So the discrepancy might be bigger still when we get preheating in this car, but Polestar may even also you know, bump up the speed. We don't know, but as it sits now, the difference in charging between this and a 21 model long range isn't too much. As nice as this interior is, the front cabin is still unnecessarily cramped, especially compared to the XC40, which this car is closely related to. That car feels airy, spacious, has a low center console, and nice amounts of storage. First off, you have this huge center tunnel, which serves no purpose at all other than being huge in your face and making the front cabin feel smaller than it actually is. And then you have the lack of storage. So first off, you have some compartment here with a wireless charging pad, which just doesn't actually charge your phone. So it's completely useless and your phone's angled away from you. So if you get a notification, you have to go forward with your head like that. That's safe. And then you have this center armrest here, which you can't actually use if you want to use the cup holder, then you can't close it. And then you have a pathetic storage bin here below the armrest, and, but if you put something to drink there, you can't actually close it. So the lack of storage and functionality of this front cabin is almost, almost a deal breaker. Last fall, when I reviewed the Polestar 2, I made a big deal about the seating position and me getting lower back pain from it, it not being comfortable, and it basically being a deal breaker for me. Thankfully, I have been able to find a more comfortable seating position, but still the seating position and the adjustability isn't optimal. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm now sat at the distance which is comfortable for my feet. So the dead pedal is nicely placed there. You can see that I have a nice angle here. I don't have any ear below my thigh. And then I have this seat put in the angle which I find comfortable. So I'm not, you know, set up into the dashboard. I have enough air, you know, the mirror is at a nice distance. But the problem is, is that when you can see that the steering wheel is too far away from me, right? You should have the steering wheel here to have a nice comfortable seating position and a safe seating position. So the way to combat that, you could do one thing. And first off, I'm gonna show you that there is a lot of reach, but not enough rake. In the XC40, because you sit a bit higher, you can sit closer and the dead pedal isn't too close. The problem is the dead pedal being too close. And the way the Model 3 fixes this is that you have more rake in the steering wheel. That would fix everything. But to, you could do a few things. You could put the seat back up, but then, you know, the mirror is a bit close and I'm sitting too upright. I don't want to do that. If I put the seat forwards more, I get this angle. And this is fine, you know, for short driving periods, but after a few hours on the road, not having the support puts the strain on my lower back. It might just be my body, guys, but I want to explain this in detail to you. So the way I combat this is by putting up the seat cushion at an angle like this, and then I can move forward. So this is the way, and then I have this angle. I still am a bit too close to the mirror, but I'm sitting at a much better angle. So I have had this seating position for the past three days, driven this car more than 1,000 kilometers, and it works. Still not optimal. I'm gonna put it back a bit. Still not optimal, but I don't get any lower back pain, so this is something I could live with.
on its own merits alone, the Polestar 2 is an awesome car. It's a great car. It looks good, it drives good, it's comfortable, it's fast, it's sporty, it has a nice interior. It does a lot of things very well. But we don't live in a vacuum and we have to compare to its main competitor, the Tesla Model 3. And on paper, it looks like it's not a competition. The Model 3 is cheaper, charges faster, goes the furthest, has you know, arguably a more practical cabin with more space in the front cabin. This may be, you know, a bit more practical being a hatch. But I don't live on paper and you people probably don't live on paper either. Because in my opinion, the way this thing drives, the way it rides, the way it is quiet on the motorway, how serene it is, can't be measured you know in zero to 100 kilometer an hour times it can't be measured in over the air updates it can't be measured in the number of superchargers to me the comfort levels the lack of noise the refinement levels the nvh levels overweighs the lack of range the lack of charging speed because it charges fast enough for most people. It also goes far enough for most people. To me, this is a better car for what I care about. I think it rides great, it drives great, it handles great. It's so comfortable to live with and it's beautiful. It is one of the best looking cars in modern history in my opinion so guys i am very fond of this car and i'm so fond of it that you know i'm maybe considering getting one but i have my e-tron so maybe not now but guys if i hit 100,000 subscribers i may buy one so you guys know what to do if you want me to get one so guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.